Hi everyone, I'm here with Scott Monty from Brain Trust Partners. He's just got off stage here at PubCon. Fantastic talk, Scott. Thank you. Talked a lot about trust. Yes. Where are we with trust? Why did you make such a big deal out of it? Well, I mean, you can look at any any issue of the Edelman Trust Barometer, which is usually the publication that people look at when they when they uh, determine how public trust is trending with regard to government and media and, and companies. And it fluctuates from year to year, but we're still we're still not as trusted as we should be. And and I, I always ask myself, well why is that? It's not like we're communicating any less with people. Um, part of the challenge is that there's more noise out there than ever before. And the temptation, as social has become co-opted by marketing, the temptation is to simply use old advertising techniques and blast messages at people instead of having conversations with people. And if we took the time to do more of that and less of the other, I think you'd start to see a change in this in this trust curve. So we like to talk about influencer marketing and employee advocacy, but also the, the, the personal branding side of things. Influencer marketing seems to have exploded in the last couple of years. Uh, what tips do you give brands uh, in, in order to start thinking about that because Scott Stratton from Unmarketing was talking about some influencer marketing is kind of paid or it, you know it doesn't look quite right what what would you say to companies looking at that well again I would say we've seen marketing come in and co-opt this because while I was at Ford I was on the communications team and we did what I call influencer relations which is a little different than influencer marketing influencer relations is more like traditional media relations where you pick an influencer whose publication you watch or read regularly, you know the types of things that they cover. So you know what to then offer them for opportunities with a product or uh, at a company headquarters or uh, at, a, at a news event or what have you. Influencer marketing, on the other hand, I think is less about relationships and more about transactions, right? So that's where you get this paid element where You'll get an agent sometimes, you'll get a contract put in front of you. I mean, there's all sorts of um, machinations that influencers are taking these days and treating themselves like a business to be bought and paid for. And, and ultimately, if your brand doesn't fit really well with their audience, they seem like a shill. And it's going to be not only, uh, you're not only not going to see bad results, you're probably going to see poorer results because you're, you're just going to be judged as tone deaf at that point. So you spent a long time working at Ford and then left, built a successful consulting business. You've got a great personal brand. You know, you turned up snappy dresser. We're in Vegas with a lot of SEOs uh, who, you know, aren't always as sharply turned out. But there's got to be something beyond the bow tie. So give us your... Give us your, uh, your, 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 your kind of two cents on personal branding and how people should think about it. Well, you know, personal branding has become such a thing in recent years, and to me, it's always been just being myself. You know, I talked about authenticity in my speech, so that's really what it is. Uh, and, and not to get too political, but, you know, Donald Trump is in hot water for a hot mic that caught him when he didn't think he was on camera. Well, if he was just authentic, if he was the real Donald Trump all the time, we would all see exactly who he is every day. And if you're being authentic, it doesn't matter whether you're working on behalf of a company, it doesn't matter whether you're an entrepreneur or you're just out having a good time, you're yourself. And to me, that's the crux of personal branding. Um, when you're dealing with executives at some of these big companies, we, we have them uh, work with many are delightful. They're sometimes reticent to get on the, on the social medias because maybe they're in a slightly older demographic and they think it's a bit frivolous, but they also want to be seen as thought leaders as well. How, how, how should, uh, as you say, communications teams think about uh, executives within businesses and their personal role? Well, in particular, CEOs who, if they're doing their jobs right, 50% of their job should be communications related, whether they're talking to investors or employees or the general public, they are spokespeople on behalf of the company. And there's no reason not to be on another platform where you're basically saying the same thing that you're saying elsewhere. Uh, and, and to me, it's never a missed opportunity, it's never wasted time to talk to a customer. 
or in a CEO's case, to talk to an employee or to talk to an investor. They just have more tools at their disposal now to do that. Now, these are busy people and they can't be on these platforms every day, so they probably should take the one that makes the most sense to them and look at what kinds of objectives they're trying for, look at what goals they have, and apply a strategy and apply a, uh, a tactic or a platform that helps them to realize that goal. So if it's thought leadership, well maybe they want to be writing on the, uh, the publishing side of LinkedIn, or on Medium, or on your company blog. Maybe they've got a great personality for video and you want to capture them on video on a regular basis, right? There's all sorts of ways to go about this and it doesn't have to be heavy lifting.